In response to a post from Holmar's catalog, Elon Musk said that Tesla is compressing about 300 lines of legacy code by about two orders of magnitude. That not only means amazing things for full self-driving, but also for intelligence. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I'm going to start with the posts. They're no longer called tweets, they're now called posts. So anyway, just wanted to specify that here. But Holmar's catalog on August 1st, which is yesterday as I record this, said, the Tesla AI team has pulled off a miracle and doesn't get enough credit. I just say where I want to go and my car takes me there with just computer vision and zero human input routinely. Tesla, you know. So this is an amazing thing. You can watch his video. I will, of course, post a link to this and Elon's response to it in the description so you can have that. It is a pretty amazing thing. Now, obviously, Omar lives in the San Francisco Bay Area, and so he has a better driving experience than a lot of us do because it's trained more there. But even where I am in Georgia and now, of course, in Virginia while I'm with my parents, the car is really exceptional in driving. And yeah, people complain about all the little things that it does wrong, and it still does do a lot of things wrong but it's exceptionally good. It's, it's, it's an amazing thing to think about. You know, five or six years ago, it just would have been unimaginable that a car could drive this well on its own. So what Elon says, taking the impossible and making it merely late is pretty much true right here. And I know it's not Elon doing this, it's the Tesla team. And the Tesla team deserves all the credit in the world because they are practically miracle workers. It's, it's really incredible that they're able to do what they're able to do. And one of the things they've been doing for several years, starting back when Andre Carpathy was still working with Tesla before he moved over to OpenAI, is they're working on moving from software 1.0 to software 2.0, as Andre calls it. That is moving from legacy, hard-coded C, C++ type of code over to neural network architectures for everything in the full self-driving stack. And that's what brings us to Elon Musk's response to Omar's post. Vehicle control is the final piece of the Tesla full self-driving AI puzzle. That will drop about 300 lines of C++ control code by about two orders of magnitude. It is training as I write this. Our progress is currently training compute constrained, not engineering constrained. And you'll notice my response underneath that was very breathless. I said this is exceptionally exciting news because it is. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more right now. So vehicle control is the output code, right? You've got the vision system, it figures out what's going on, it figures out what do I need to do next, and then the last piece of that control chain is the output control. So it's like, what do I do? Do I turn the steering wheel two degrees to the right? Do I press the accelerator 3%? Do I press the brakes and let the regen work? What is it that I'm going to be doing at that point? And while the output control for a vehicle is very, very much simpler than the rest of this stuff, which is I'm sure why they have left it to last, it still requires 300,000 lines of C++ code, and that is, it's amazing to think about that. So that's the easy part of the job. That's the part that's like, no big deal, we can do this. This is something, they probably built this a long time ago, uh, because the, the control systems, it's just basically if-then things. It's like, if I see this, if I want to do this, then do this, then do this, and it's just stacks and stacks and stacks of that, with exception cases and error handling and all of that kind of stuff, and it just balloons very, very rapidly. But as opposed to the other pieces of the puzzle, it's worked well enough thus far for it to be able to be kept as the old legacy type of code. But what they're finally doing here is they're finally moving that from legacy code over to neural network architectures as part of their end-to-end -end neural network stack. And the absolutely crazy part of that is that they're moving from about 300,000 lines of code to about 3,000 lines of code. Now, the big thing about neural network architecture is it's not a one-to-one -one comparison with hard coding. Neural network architectures are really, really simple. In terms of the actual code, the amount of lines of code you have to write to do this kind of work, it's much, much smaller in general than the old legacy hard coding thing because you don't have to put in all the exceptions. You don't have to do things like explicit error handling and things like that because what neural networks do is they learn from the data. So as opposed to a human being thinking to themselves, well, what would I do in this circumstance? I would do this. And then programming that in explicitly and telling the computer what to do and the computer follows it very rigidly. And of course, that's when you get your kind of jerky steering wheel action and you get the kind of non-human robotic, traditional robotic type of activity that goes on with the output controls of the vehicle. You're moving from that to something that's learning on its own and it's figuring out how to do it on its own. So the result of this is going to be that we're going to get much more human, much more nuanced driving controls rather than what we're used to at this point. 
And then of course we get to the second paragraph. It is training as I write this. Our progress is currently training compute constrained, not engineer constrained. So what this means is that they're actually working on it. They've already sort of built it out. It's training, it's in the process of doing this kind of thing. And remember, it's not usually just one training run. It's a training run. Then they're like, oh, what went wrong with that? Go back, try again, go back, try again, go back, try again. So there's like over and over and over again, this iterative process. So it takes a long time and it takes a massive amount of compute to be able to make this happen, but it's, fascinating that Elon says this is not engineering constrained at this point. In other words, they're not looking for the right architecture. They're just waiting for this thing to train and fine tune itself enough that it can be utilized on customer vehicles, that it's good enough for that. So that takes a really, really long time and a lot of compute. And of course, that has a lot to do with Tesla's drive to get to 100 exaflops of compute power by next year. Did a video on that. You can check it out up here if you're interested. So this is all amazing news. I expect we will see this in maybe version 11.420 of the software, which I know that's what they said. That's what Elon has said, that they're saving that up for a big update, or it is possible that we'll see it in version 12 of the software. But I personally think that version 12 of the software might be fundamentally different architecture than what we're seeing in the current version 11. I don't know that for sure. But anyway, this is good to see. It's going to have to, this will have to be part of version 12 as well. But I think that the whole build out of version 12 is, is fundamentally different. And that's why Elon has talked about driving around the alpha version of version 12. So maybe they'll just go ahead and roll this into version 12. Don't know, of course, because I don't have any inside insight into Tesla. But whatever it is, in the next couple of versions, major updates to the software, we are going to get some significant architectural changes. So that's what's on tap for those of us who have full self-driving beta. And Elon has said full self-driving version 12 is not going to be beta anymore. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. I'm not sure that that's going to be true, but we'll see. It's very optimistic and I kind of love that. But given this context, I want to touch on compression and intelligence. So there is a theory out there, and I, I pretty well subscribe to it, that the more compression you can do as an entity, whether that's an, a dog or a, a worm or a human being or a computer or whatever, the more compression you can do on reality, the more intelligent you are. So humans are more intelligent than something like a dog or a cat because we're able to compress reality further down than a dog or a cat. They're able to compress reality further down than something like an insect, etc. So what does that mean? That means we're able to compress the world down into a very sophisticated and yet very compact model that fits in this little thing that we have inside of our skulls. That is a remarkable achievement that we have. And of course, other animals are able able to do that to some extent. They're clearly able to move around and work in the world, but we have been able to build tools, everything from primitive like rocks as hammers, all the way up to computers and AI and all of that kind of stuff. And so the theory is that the more you can compress things, the more intelligent you are. Really intriguing theory. And of course, this translates into computer software. So if you can take 300,000 lines of code and reduce it to about 3,000 lines of code, two orders of magnitude, that means that you are more intelligent than the old version of the code. And I don't think there's any argument with that. I think what we see with something like ChatGPT and other large language models and with full self-driving as well is that they're able to compress language or reality or both down into a very compact model relative to the data that's out there. So you have something like ChatGPT that is able to take trillions and trillions of words of data and compress that down into gigabytes of data instead. That is a pretty significant compression ratio. And then of course, you've got a car that's able to drive in the real world, which is almost unconstrained in its complexity, the amount of information that's out there. And it compresses it down to something small enough and efficient enough that it can run on a little computer board that sits in your car. So what this means, if this theory is correct, is that we're seeing neural network architectures being demonstrably more intelligent than traditional heuristic hard coding. And that is really interesting. That means in this transition from software 1.0 to software 2.0, we're not just getting better tools, we're getting more intelligent tools. And that eventually is going to lead to some sort of generalized intelligence. Again, I differentiate generalized intelligence or AGI from artificial artificially intelligent agents or AIA, that's what I call it at least. But I believe that artificially intelligent agents have like a drive and a motivation. They're agents, they're like a person. Artificially general intelligence is just a really, really smart tool that can do kind of anything. And of course, I very much believe that we're going to get to AGI before AIA. 
and that in order to get to artificially intelligent agents, we might have to drop down another order of magnitude in terms of compression. I don't know that for a fact. Again, this is all speculation. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about this a little bit in relation to Elon's tweet, because what we're seeing is in this compression of software, at least theoretically, what we're seeing is evidence of more and more and more intelligence in this computer code because of the way it's able to compress reality into a smaller and smaller form factor. Factor. So from the full self-driving standpoint, this is fantastic news that they're finally getting rid of the last major block of legacy code. From the intelligence standpoint, it's also really remarkable and very cool to think about and potentially a little bit scary because we could be talking about a situation where these things can start to become as intelligent as humans and then potentially even more intelligent than humans. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it because that's how YouTube's AI works. And also consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon, my YouTube channel members, and of course my ex-subscribers. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel in any way that you can. And of course, if you want to join one of the teams, just check out the links in the description. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have Teslabot t-shirts, the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells. All of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a new Tesla, a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.